What's up guys? So I was having a conversation the other day with someone who they are about a couple months into the weight loss journey and they just lost about 10 to 15 pounds and they said, Scott, I was doing really good. I was losing the weight, but then I started feeling like crap. It, nothing was going good. I, I felt like I was getting sick and it kind of lost motivation to keep continuing to lose weight. And I said, this kind of makes sense. I see, I've seen this quite a bit. It's just normal physiology. When someone starts to lose weight, their body is going to start going through some changes. Now, we have to think about something here. Losing weight is very, very difficult. But the question is, why is that? Does it have to do with exercise? Does it have to do with diet? Well, not, none of that really. Okay, let's, let's look at something here. There's a book called The Biggest uh, Fat Chance by Robert Lustig. Highly recommend the book. And if you look here, um, it's gonna, here's a graph he put in the book about weight loss. You might have seen the show The Biggest Loser. Well, The Biggest Loser here, they actually don't, they, they lose the weight in the short term, but according to the study here, they put all the weight back on. So if, see here, um, this is the percentage of the biggest loser contestants that return all of the weight back. So if you see by year nine, almost 100% of them have returned all the weight back. Now, so this makes a huge problem. So let's kind of look at some of the physiology behind this. Okay, so right here, there's a nice... Um, study here in Science Daily that talks about when you lose weight, your body actually releases toxins. Now, let's think about toxins here. It's some metals. Think about mercury um, is, the, is a popular one. But really, anything in the air, environmental toxins, breathing in air pollution, any excess carbon, stuff like that, your body is going to store it in fat. So your adipose tissue, aka that's kind of that fat you're thinking about, either around the organs or around the body, around the hips, your body's going to store toxins in it. Now, this is kind of a strategy by the body. When it has a lot of toxins going through it, it's like, crap, what do I do with this? I can't handle it right now because the immune system is under too much of a threat. So it just shoves it into the fat cell, into the adipose tissue. Um, and this is a great strategy by the body. It's going to go inside the fat. But, and then it can deal with it at a later time. When maybe you're not so stressed, it can think about dealing with it. But in this case, you're, at, you're losing weight. Now, another reason that we start seeing a lot of people get sick, potentially in the wintertime, is, is this is a, kind of a time you start to lose weight. Think about humans for thousands and thousands of years. People are going to be losing the most weight in the fall. There's no more food available, harvest is over, um, plants don't grow, there's a lack of food, this is when we're fasting, the lack of sunlight. This is all strategies, I mean, this is all cues to lose weight. P think of a polar bear. A polar bear is going to lose weight in the, in the wintertime. So this is part of the reason that we see a lot of people getting sick in the winter, is you're releasing these toxins. Okay, but also another interesting thing here, um, SARS-CoV-2, aka COVID, actually goes in adipose tissue. So kind of that ACE2 receptor that we think about with uh, COVID, kind of the door into the cell, um, fat tissue actually has that door. And COVID loves going inside through that door. It uses that door to get in. So in the study here, they kind of talked about how COVID likes to really get into the fat cell, the adipose tissue. So people that are more prone to have more fat are more prone to these infections. So we have to look at kind of the, how a virus works. So we look here, a virus is going to inject its information into the cell. Guys, a virus is nothing but either RNA or DNA information. So you see here, right here, uh, let's get this little better view. This is the capsid of the virus, and right here it's going to inject its information into the cell. And then from here, that DNA, RNA, whatever strategy that virus is going, 
it's going to use that cell's machinery to replicate itself, aka the DNA. So whatever message that virus wants to spread and continue, it is going to do that through um, the replication process here. So then once it uses the cell to do it, so the cell starts pumping out new viruses essentially. So it gets to a phase here, you see number four, where you kind of have what's called a bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is kind of a cell that viruses are just loaded inside. Now a lot of times this goes undetected. Your immune system doesn't consider this a threat quite yet for whatever reason. You might be overstressed and your body's missing this. It has other fish to look at, bigger fish to worry about in the sea. While it's maybe not going to care about this. Honestly, you have, I think it's around 10 pounds of virus inside of you at any one time. And these viruses are microscopic. So you have all kinds of viruses in you that have undetected. And in the case of COVID, it's in your fat cells. And now let's look at this release phase. Now this can be kind of thought of when you're starting to lose the weight. That cell gets broken open and the energy gets released. Well, this could, is essentially what can be going on with COVID. So when, or pretty much any virus, guys, there's millions, trillions of viruses out there that it's not specific to COVID. There's a lot of cell viruses that we won't ever know about. I mean, in one droplet of seawater, there's trillions of viruses. So the cell, a fat cell is really holding a lot of toxins, a lot of viruses, a lot of uh, metal, and just a lot of toxicity issues. So when you start losing weight, this is kind of the issues that you're going to see is you're going to start feeling sick a little bit and it's going to confuse you. So don't, don't get stressed up. This is a normal thing that's going to happen when you lose weight. I hear it time and time and time again. So looking back here, we saw here with the study, boom, there's going to be, and then right here, diets releasing toxins. And then this is kind of the virus component. So let's look at some, what can you do about this? How can you combat this feeling like crap when you're losing weight? Okay, let's look at the role of amino acids, proteins. Um, make it simple here. So if you read this review article here from the British Journal of Nutrition, it does a really good job of outlining how all your amino acids have a role in your immune system and kind of what their role is. So first and foremost, make sure you're getting your protein. 100 grams a day minimum, you got to go. I think it's something about, um, God, two kilograms, um, two grams. I, I'll look it up. I'll put it in the comments here on the exact recommendations. But I aim for at least 100 here. Okay, so if you go through the study here and start looking at which ones do you want to go after? I mean, obviously eat them all, but there's a few amino acids you want to consume. You want to do a good job of. And right here, let's look at the top line here, if you can see it. Arginine. So arginine is an amino acid. It's found heavily in meat, um, cheese, milk, things like that, seeds as well, that... It, what it, here's what it's going to do. It's going to do a good job of increasing what's called nitric oxide in the body. Okay, so let's look at the immune system. One part of the immune system is a macrophage. A uh, macrophage is gonna is basically like a Pac-Man, macrophage, however you want to say it, uh, depending on where you're from. So this little Pac-Man figure is going to go and it's going to eat whatever it's gonna go after, whatever the threat is, whether it's a cell, bacteria, virus, toxin, whatever. It's gonna go into that, it's gonna capture. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna spit a little bit of this nitric acid into the cell to destroy it. Amazing thing, beautiful. So if it detects, hey, this cell, this fat cell is potentially harvest, um, harboring viruses, it's gonna inject the nitric acid inside of it and destroy the cell. Amazing. And arginine, arginine is an amazing way to increase this. So when you start feeling, when you start losing weight, think about increasing your arginine uptake or kind of getting a little more um, or possibly supplement it with your diet. Now the next one here is lysine. Now think of herpes simplex, which is a cold sore, that little thing you get on your lip. Um, that virtually almost everyone has, it's a virus. 
And when this virus starts coming out, it's gonna create that cold sore. And anything you buy in the store, that, that, yeah, that little chapstick type of stuff that says combats cold sores, is gonna be composed of lysine. So lysine is amazing for viruses. Anytime I start getting a little bit sick, boom, I have a bottle of lysine pills that I'm popping like crazy. And this has really helped with prevention of getting sick from a virus. So arginine and lysine, keep it simple. Those are the two big ones. You can think, uh, you can think into this a little more. Um, the amino acid citrulline uh, then converts into arginine, so you could possibly supplement citrulline as well. Um, but in general, guys, make sure you get enough protein in. And when you start losing weight, arginine lysine is going to be a good strategy for you. Okay, now let's look at this next uh, molecule here. There's something called metalloethiethinone. It's a mouthful. I can barely say it. So this molecule here, think of it as the school bus of the cell. So inside the cell, you're going to have this little school bus that's going to go and pick up the toxins of the cell. Um, mercury is usually a big one, but there's many other metals that it's going to be taken, stuff that doesn't belong. It's basically immune system defense, that this actually it has a huge role in brain disorders. So people that maybe that you're getting, losing weight, this is going to be a good strategy, a good molecule to go after. Increase that school bus of the cell of this metalotothiathinone, right, molecule. Okay, so the school bus is going to be going around the cell. Now we got to look at what are the drivers of this school bus. What's going to be running the show? And there's three big players here. You have zinc, you have selenium, and you have copper. So really, if you're deficient in any of those three, this school bus isn't going to be doing as good a job. So another good strategy is increasing zinc, selenium, and copper in order to combat um, those toxins when you're losing weight. Okay, so let's review here. Number one, arginine. Milk, consume milk. You have to increase that macrophage um, activity, increase that nitric acid activity um, with arginine. Lysine, milk and yogurt, those are two high sources of lysine. So either supplement it or get it from food. Three, um, oysters. Okay, so zinc, oysters and beef. Oysters is probably the best thing you can go with. Oysters are amazing. They contain a lot of selenium, a lot of copper, and a lot of zinc. So guys, eat oysters. They're amazing, they're super food. I would say probably the, if I could eat only one food the rest of my life, it would by far be an oyster. And beef as well, guys, beef has a lot of good um, nutrients in it, but especially zinc. Or also you can supplement it. Now, the next one here, number four, is selenium. Selenium is kind of a nutrient that we're starting to see more and more deficient in the American population. Selenium really has a role with the thyroid. It's huge. So if you have any thyroid issues, selenium is going to be something you want to get after here. Um, also, most of us are deficient in selenium, believe it or not. So a good strategy for combating this is two Brazil nuts a day. So Brazil nuts are kind of, if you have that little can of mixed nuts, the Brazil nut is going to be that thick, that bigger one, that white one that just doesn't taste as good. It's kind of bland. It has kind of a nasty taste. It's not, it's just nothing to it. So eat two of them a day to get your RDI of selenium. Um, and then number five here is copper. So copper, you almost got to be kind of careful with, with copper. Copper is going to be found high in liver. Now copper is kind of toxic to the body at higher amounts. Uh, the copper IUD is, not, is a form of birth control that can kill any potential pregnancy off. But you got to be really careful about these ratios in the body that when you start supplementing copper, that it's going to um, maybe lead too much and it could lead to toxicity issues in the body. But nature kind of already figured out how to avoid this problem. It's going to kind of put stuff in ratios in the body. 
Um, another thing I kind of see here with getting, getting off topic just a little bit is anemia, iron deficient anemia. So anyone that they um, do a blood test and the doctor's like, get more iron. Well, guys, I don't really see that being possible. So the problem ain't really a deficiency of iron because the iron recycling system is amazing in the body that, and pretty much any processed food has iron fortified to it. I mean, iron is one of the most abundant minerals on this planet. So being deficient in iron just isn't quite possible. But you got to go a step further and look at seruplasm, where seruplasm is copper dependent. So if you're actually low in copper, you're going to be deficient in iron. So you got to be careful here, guys. This stuff can get very complicated. But that's why I say at the end of the day, go for the food. Eat your little bit of liver, not too much liver. But go for the oysters, go for the fish food, and the Brazil nuts. I mean, supplementing the uh, zinc, selenium, copper, you got to make sure you're with a doc that knows what he's doing that's testing right. But if you go with the food sources, you should be okay. And this all kind of goes back to the immune system with metalatathione, um, that school bus of the cell that's going around and collecting these met metal toxins which these metatoxins are getting released into the bloodstream when you're losing fat. So guys, when you, start, when you start your weight loss journey, make sure you get enough protein and nutrients, and that's gonna really increase your chances of not becoming just another statistic of someone that failed to lose weight and keep it off. Um, but that's kind of it. This is a uh, pretty complex stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. These are all supplements that we keep here um, at the clinic, Upright Health Chiropractic here in Lakeville, Minnesota. But uh, give us, uh, make sure you subscribe. We're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on Facebook. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.